Hello, good, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. My name is Charles Myungshin Gabaran. I'm a Youth Leadership Training International trainee. I am from the Philippines. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> so, by the way, um, as we present like right now the YL Talk Series Session 2, we're going to have an introduction which entitled The Five Principles of Peace. So these principles are secrets of the universe. So are you excited to hear it? <laughs> okay, by the way, um, right now we're going to introduce it to... Hi. Yeah, the five principles of peace. So let me ask you one question. So everyone wants a world of peace, right? So everybody dreams of a peaceful place to live and be happy. So may I ask you, do you want to be happy? Yeah, I can hear you say yes. Everyone is struggling to attain happiness and avoid misfortune. But as we look at the world nowadays, let's face the reality. We are living in an unhappy world. No one can forget the wars that happened to our world, especially the World War II, which killed 37.6 million deaths. That was worrisome. And here's the Jewish people killed by um, Nazi of Adolf Hitler. This man's worst inhumanity to man. So how worrisome. And we cannot forget the 9-11 attack, which killed more or less 4,000 people. Well, not only that, nowadays we still experience wars like U.S. versus Iraq, um, Syria, in Omen, in Yemen, in many other parts of the world. Are you experiencing the same circumstances too? Well, in our country, in the Philippines, there are things like this also. Not only that, we also experience hunger and poverty. So as we can see, there are impoverished children like this one in Africa, in here in the Philippines, in India, and there are many countries who are experiencing poverty. Well, as you can see, this person, well, do you think he or she is still alive? Well, let me tell you one fact. This person is still alive, but they look like dead. More than 60,000 people die every day because of starvation. Isn't that sad? Well, let me tell you one great solution. But let's first talk about one quote from Desiderus Erasmus. He once said, The main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth. So is the youth really educated? At this moment, as we can see the reality, people are already drowned into alcoholic abuse, drug addiction, youth always experience this, the sexual immorality, free sex among the youth, teenagers get pregnant and something like that. So because of that, families were broken. The one fact is, in many nations, more than 50% of marriages end in divorce. So when the mother and the father end up in divorce, who will be affected? Well, it's the children. But who can solve this problem? It's like in our environment, now we can see the world right now. The world is full of water pollution, chemical waste, air pollution, Garbage disposal problem. And we cannot deny the fact that the ozone layer depletion in above Antarctica, and now it's still worrisome to see something like this. Well, global warming and climatic change isn't stopping because of human nature, human deeds. Not only that, let me pose one problem. We are living in a time where conflicts have been raised to a highly dangerous level because of the nuclear weapons of mass destruction. Right now, US, USSR, China, France, India, Pakistan, North uh, Korea, 
and anywhere else in this world are undergoing the nuclear arms race for them to say that they are protected. But one fact is, a nuclear war will be the end of our planet and all of humanity. Do you agree with me? It can destroy the earth 14 times over. Isn't that sad? Let's tackle these questions. Why our world become like this? What is the root cause of these problems? What are the root cause of these problems? Who is responsible to solve these problems? How do we solve this in order to give a better future to our children? Well, can the government solve this problem? There are many incompetent governments in our, in our country, in the world, right? Not only the Philippines, but in any places of the world. Not only that, even the United States, the United Nations can solve this problem. So humanity have addressed this conflict, but to our disappointment, these challenges have remained unresolved and is getting worse with the passage of time. Thus, we need a new perspective. Let me tell you one allegory. Well, for example, there is an object in front of you, maybe a vase, a flower, or anything you like. And you have your camera. When you get the perspective when you get a picture of that you can go to different perspectives right you can go side up down left right you can go anywhere but then with that perspective there is one special spot in which that photography that picture can be seen by people and be amazed by that even simple perspective so that's what we're finding right now there are many perspectives am i right but we need a new approach a new perspective that's why we are here as the universal peace federation or upf has this new and comprehensive approach to meet these challenges that's why we are doing these activities as you can see in the video a while ago we're addressing these issues well let me introduce to you the co-founders universal peace federation of Reverend Sun Yong Moon and Dr. Hak Chan Moon. Let's give them a round of applause, yay. So they have this effort in which they could, uh, we have this new perspective to solve the problem. That's why right now we are introducing to you UPF's five principles of peace. So do you want to know the five principles of peace? The key secret to solve all the problems of the world. Are you excited? <laughs> okay. Without further ado, let me introduce to you the first principle. Well, religions of the world has been existing for thousands of years. There are Muslims, is up. there are Islam, uh, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism, Hindu, uh, Hainism, Judaism, and many other more religions. Am I right? And in those religions, there are different gods. Let's, let's say different interpretation, different how they call God. Some religion call God as Allah, others is Brahman, Hananim, Yahweh, Ahura Mazda, and there are many more names. But just as we can compare to a brand of shirt, right? Shirt has many brands. You can call it in different brands, right? There are shirts like um, Nike and uh, there are cotton shirts and something like that. There are lots of shirts, there are lots of um, dress, there are lots of neckties, there's lots of shoes. But all of them, even though they have different names, they serve one purpose. And that is the purpose to make us presentable. This is God. God can be called in different names in different perspective. But we are all referring to one true God. Everything makes up, yeah, still the same God. Just languages are different. God is called in different languages, in different words. Can you follow? Okay, let's proceed. So the first principle of peace is God is a parent of humankind. And we are all brothers and sisters with God as our parent. No matter who we are, no matter where we're from, God is our 
parent, the parent of humankind, the one true God. Do you believe in me? It is also said in different religion, in different perspectives. We cannot just look at one perspective. We, can, we have to look at the whole picture. Well, in Judaism and Christianity, it's stated that you are the children of the Lord your God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And Islam in Quran, all my people worship Allah, yea, have no other God but Him. All human creatures are God's children, and those dearest to God are those who treat His children kindly. God is called in different names, but He is still our one parent, the parent of humanity. Next, let me tell you the second principle. Principle number two, be a good person. Well, we heard this all the time. You have to be a good person. You have to be a good example to your brothers and sisters. You have to be a good example to your nation. Yeah, we hear those words most of the time. A good person has good character by practicing God's word. So as you can see in the diagram on your screen, it is where God, our mind, body, form a good person when it is centered on true love. Our mind pursues truth, beauty, goodness, and love. Our body seeks for eat, drink, sleep, sex, and comfort. Well, the body's desire are equivalent to the instincts of animal. So what if we interchange the subject and the object? Or we interchange, we made the body the primary, which is equivalent to the instinct of animals, and make our mind secondary. It's where immorality, corruption, robbery, rape, violence, you can name it all. Because these are all instincts of a person who only seek for his body's desires, living centering on bodily desires. So as you can see in the diagram, our mind and body is seeking for different truth and satisfaction. Our mind is truly satisfied when truth, beauty, goodness, and love is manifested. So it brings us um, inner satisfaction. While well, a body, good, wealth, wealth, comfort, and sex give us physical well-being, which brings us true and lasting happiness, which is centered on true love. But what if we adopt one? We exclude the mind. So we only seek for food, shelter, wealth, and comfort, physical well-being. Well, if that happened, we can only feel temporary happiness. But is only what if the body we, we put an x to the body desires but it's still not perfect it needs subject it needs object it needs the inner which is from the mind and the outer which is from the body it has to manifest to each other to bring true and lasting happiness well let me ask you again do you want to be happy so this is one good truth you can be happy by manifesting the two satisfaction, inner satisfaction and physical well-being. Well, one great American president from the past told us that to educate a person in mind and not in morals is to educate a menace to society. Well, we all believe that people are good. People are intelligent. They're intelligent in this stuff, these kind of things. Well, we all know that people who are stealing robbers have their own mind. They're still very clever to enter a very secured house or bank, right? A murderer is also very intelligent. He can kill someone without, no, without anyone noticing it. So we all believe that everyone is intelligent. But ladies and gentlemen, not everyone is good. That's why we value morals. Isn't that not right? Okay, so this is a diagram again. So we must pursue first our mind before the desires of our body. We give love to other people, we share love to other people, and manifest true love within mind, body, unity, centering on God. And after you became a good person, it's time to build a good family, a good 
And well, good person, ideal husband, with his ideal wife, centering on God, building a good family through their children, centering on true love. So family itself is a school of love. There are four realms of love. Let me break it down for you. There is child's love, sibling's love, spouse love or conjugal love, and parent's love. So totally of God, totality of God's love experienced through the family. That's why we must center always our family centering our God. But as youth, right, we first value this virtue, the child's love, which tackles about respect and gratitude. Have you respect your parents? Have you give them more gratitude? Well, that's our role as children. We give love to respect and gratitude. So after this session, I would like to encourage you to say thank you to your mother or father and respect them more than you respect them before. Do I make myself clear? And next, once we build a relationship to our parents, we build a relationship to our siblings, not only our physical siblings, because some of us are living, you know, just one child, only child, but we extend that love to our classmates, the people around us, the people we meet every day. That is siblings' love, harmony, and cooperation. That's why you are here. You're building harmony, you're building cooperation to each other. And next is fidelity and commitment. This is spouse love. This is the only love that you cannot share to other people. Always remember that. One man, one woman. And lastly, the greatest love of all is the parent's love. It's more on sacrifice, investment, and compassion. Sacrifice, investment, and compassion. It is the unconditional love. So strong families have focus higher than self. It's service to the community. We extend our love to our community. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Let me proceed next to the next principle, principle number four. God's ideal is what? Living for the sake of others. Once we build a good family, we build a good society. We, give, we build a good nation and one world family. Isn't that very happy to have your neighbors, other people from different nationalities to be part of your family? That's what we do in YLT. We treat everyone as our brothers and sisters. Because also in nature, we experience this. Atom, solar system, all has positive and negative gravitational pull from the sun and the planets. All is about living for the sake of others, right? Plant kingdom, give life to animals, and animals give life to plants through, uh, uh, through oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's the law of nature. Or, and they are, these are the laws of cooperation. So these are laws of cooperation from parents and child, teachers, students, employers, employees, government, and people. So in every text, we can see this kind of teaching. So take time to read, but mind you, everything is connected to living for the sake of others. Living for the sake of others means we die for them as well. So this is the fourth principle, God's ideal, living for the sake of others. Next, the last but, but not the least principle, interreligious, international cooperation are essential to world peace. The religions of the world, the source of humanity's deepest values and highest ideals, powerful instrument for personal transformation, spiritual and moral framework for society. If misused, can have devastating effect. Religious disunity shapes individuals and society negatively blocks the way to peace. Well, when you build religion, the religion from the, for this kind of people, this, this kind of people, so if those kind of people are only living for the sake of themselves, there will be no world peace. If this nation is only living for the sake of its nation, there will be no world peace. So we have to open our barriers and meet the people around and away from us. So just as our founder said, he said, if, 
if religion do not give high priority to interreligious dialogue and harmony and practice these dialogue and harmony among civil civilization will be impossible that's why in our organization we build cooperation between religion between nationality isn't this a good picture seeing different religion one picture is very rare right it's very easy to see pictures with the same religion the same nationality but seeing a picture with different races different nationality different religion so heartwarming warming right so we held peace route rally of religious leaders in israel sponsored by upf so let me run down the five principles of peace well guys mind you take note of this god is the parent of humankind second be a good person third build a god-centered family or leave for the sake of others and help build a good society good nation and good world last but not the least promote interreligious international cooperation let me conclude my speech or my message our message with the writings in the tomb of religious leader in westminster abbey well listen carefully he said when i was young and free and my imagination had no limits i dreamed of changing the world guys do you have the same dream i guess you have as i grew older and wiser i discovered the world would not change so i shortened my sights somewhat and decided to change only my country but it too seemed immovable it seems like it's not happening is what they're saying as i grew in my twilight years when he became older in one last desperate attempt i settled for changing only my family those closest to me but sadly alas they would have none of it and now as i lie in my deathbed he was dying i suddenly realized if i had only changed myself first then by example i would have changed my family from their inspiration and encouragement i would then have been able to better my country and who knows i might have even changed the world well mind you ladies and gentlemen we don't start big change comes from ourselves it sprouts from each and every one of you well right now you're listening to this very very meaningful speech very meaningful message and without changing who you are you can change the world we start from training ourselves right so why youth leadership training international is practicing these five principles of peace sometimes we cooperate with other religion with other nationalities sometimes we train ourselves to witnessing fundraising um raising funds to help children to help societies these are our goal to so become a good person we build a good family we build a good society we live for the sake of others and we know that god is our parent parents religious and political leaders and educators of the world must work together to promote the principles of peace to all people and all together build a world of peace ladies and gentlemen can you do this can you build a world of everlasting peace do you want to be happy do you want everyone to be happy so this is the key and i hope you internalize you take note and you learn from this speech well once again here is charles mushin governor speaking thank you very much